guys and welcome back to If Mafia Fell by the Dark Petal 16. Today's route, romance route, will be none other than Ezria. I mean Ralsei because he lied to my face. Literally, fucked up lies to me and tells me that his name is Ralsei when in truth it's Ezreal. How dare he point against him? Already lied to me. Anyway, before we go and deal with the fluffy boy, the fluff ball. Let's read the comments on my video called If Slumber Tale Episode 2 Special Bonus and Easter Egg Just for Me. So, we have three wonderful comments. The first by Wuhan. It is me, Wuhan. According to Google, that is how I pronounce your name. If indeed I pronounced it incorrectly, please feel free to let me know how to pronounce it correctly. And also, it was Google that told me that's how I say it. Thus, I will put full blame on Google. Google, you suck. If you made me say it wrong, how dare you? And according to Google, it said that this is a, me a Mexican name. I am not 100% sure if that is correct. But that is what Google told me. And yes, it is. And I'm glad to see you have returned. Hello again. Right. Next comment, of course, is by Leah D, aka Darkhill16, the creator of said game, who said, Sweet Poppy Heart. Woohoo! I will do my best to make you like at least one MC all the way. Ha ha ha. Wow, that is quite a tall order. I'm not so sure that is possible, but I will put faith in you that you might be able to do it. Hmm. Because, I mean, you are getting a tiny bit closer. This is definitely the closest you've come so far. So... We'll see. We'll see if you can manage it. I have quite high standards. <laughs> Kara will be, oh no, added after the game is done. Oh no. The freaking chocolate level that gave me like half a heart attack in If Mafia Fell. When suddenly turning around and be like, freaking flirtatious to me because I freaking like chocolate. Who, oh, my God. Minding your own business, trying to woo freaking wing of things, and all of a sudden, a freaking car and makes a pass at you, and you're like, <gasps> No! Back off! I'm dealing with the one that gets jealous easy, go away! <laughs> but in that one, I feel like Sans would definitely. Sans is definitely the one that goes from one to like 10,000 instantly from the smell of cologne. Like, wow, he went straight to the stream. I think wing of things is more like. If I trip and fall too many times, he's like, yes, whisk you away now, go in there. That way I don't need to worry about you for now and I can come and deal with you later after you've been like fully conditioned. As a wing of dings does, apparently. Ah, the boys are so interesting, aren't they? Papyrus is the only normal one out of the Skelly Brothers. In that one. The pause and immediate reaction to Flowey had me cackling. Well, yeah, because I'm, wow. Such an extreme reaction. He wants to make me bleed. I don't think any one of them, at any point in any of the other games, has mentioned about wanting to see me bleed. He is the first one. And honestly, I was taken back. And I don't know what to think of Larry at the moment. I'm like, oh, well then. Okay. Um, that happened. Just gonna go over here for now and pretend I did not try to talk to the flower. Would like to keep my blood inside my body. I mean, that's where it technically should be, and it's a lot more healthier that way. I'm glad you enjoyed the Easter eggs. I absolutely freaking loved it. I honestly am really excited. I really want to see a proposal scene. I probably obviously get too overwhelmed and we need probably about 10 freaking bottles of water over here but honestly i love i love the the scenes i'm so excited i love the reactions also i figured out who the riveria name is it's for gerson i was like it was bothering me so i was trying to work out yesterday what other character it could have been and i realized oh it's gerson because as I was doing a recording of If and the Swap Flowies wrote and I bumped into Gerson again, I was like, you're the one with the name at the end. It's you. It's a freaking turtle. 
because I knew I recognized that last name and it was bothering me for so long. And then I was like, oh, it's Gerson. That's where the last name comes from. Anyway, now of course we got Happy Serious Streamer, aka the, our wonderful creator of another then Date Me, who said, Tackle it all! I love your videos and listening to them when, while I work. Same thing Top Petals does. Uh, apparently everybody <laughs> likes to watch these while they're working. Um, driving, all things I need to take care of. I'm so glad to hear it. Yay, new sprites, heart! Oh my god, Rivaria. Rivaria. Gosh, I cannot pronounce that freaking last name. Looks like Gerson. Gerson! Can you please make it easier to say your last name? I struggled, my man. Ah, uh, but they're trying my hardest. I'm afraid you'll just have to try harder too. <sighs> Honestly. How did I not catch that on the first video? It took me as well some time, obviously, to work out what I saw. What? I'm gobsmacked right now. I was going... I <laughs> I was going to wait a bit longer, but now on my next free time, I'm totally going to play this. I'll be on, it's like chocolate on a, a ring and ding. <laughs> Mr. Rivera, sir, please acknowledge me. Acknowledge me, senpai. <laughs> By the way, your reactions are the best, lol. Heart, heart, heart. Why, thank you. And you get on to that. I mean, <laughs> everyone's reaction. I love the fad. That's technically something I do love about Undertale is whenever you try to put, like, in the original one, whenever you try to put someone's name in that, there's a freaking response from them like, ah, 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 no, 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 that's not your name. Don't you use that. Like, you try to use Karen Kara reprimands you for it. Everybody does. Oh, in, like, fourth wall breaking. We love to see it. And I love the, the wonderful place tried to do with my name. It left me flustered and... Very, very bothered, <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> anyway, we're not going to respond to comments on the, then the date me video. So I'll be right back. Two for one. Okay, now of course I'm going to respond to the date me video that I did. This was episode two where I covered the update, which was actually a lot of fun. Um, which of course, if for those that are like, commenting on here, if you don't know who Happy Theor Theorist Streamer is, that of course is the creator of said game. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm really glad that you've been handling the comment section for me. It honestly makes it a lot easier for me. <laughs> um, let's see. Exo Blocks Mary says 20 seconds ago also first yes you were indeed the first comment on the video congratulations Michaela says I'm looking forward to seeing Axel's route heart heart I freaking I'm so excited for Axel's route Axel is freaking adorable which reminds me I need to know why exactly does Axel get so freaking cute and happy when he's in high places? Is it just he genuinely likes being up high? He likes feeling tall? Either way, his reaction is freaking adorable. I love the fact he blushes and gets really happy about that. It's so freaking cute and so innocent. As weird as that sounds, I find it adorable. Just him going up on the stepping ladder. It was just so freaking precious. I thought Buddy was precious. I still can be just as precious. He's so freaking cute. And also not mean to me. And like somebody. Rivet. What? What did I do? You know exactly what you did. Rude. Let's see. Um, Happy Theory Streamer is one is saying, when I finish with both Sons of Papyrus, yes! Undertale boys! Give me! <laughs> I want them! Give me sounds. <laughs> oh god. I will do a vote system so everyone can pick the next boy. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. For the first two secret boys, I haven't decided if I want to give them a vote system. Two secret boys. Hold on. What do you mean secret boys? There's two other boys? What other boys? Can I have a hint? <laughs> Look at me, I'm excited, there's more of them! Oh my god. Twinkle, you think you think I'd be satisfied with the amount we have and I'm like, oh, there's more? Oh, give me. 
I'm so excited for this! I can't wait! Also gives me more chance to like do more stuff like this. I freaking love this. It's so freaking cute. Right. Can, but am I allowed to hint? Can we have a hint? Is it okay for a hint? You don't like have to flat out say who it is. Just a hint. Anything. Like their favorite thing they like to eat or something. <laughs> Stupid like that. <laughs> it's like so vague. <laughs> oh god. Um, let's see. Tag here said, I asked the creator about the socks and they said the overused socks is a reference to a dirty joke. I thought it was a reference to a dirty joke. That's why I kept saying, like, was it a dirty joke? Apparently, the, this demo in the actual game is going to have a lot of references to movies, TV shows, music, and Undertale uh, lore. And fourth wall breaking. We love fourth wall breaking. You don't worry, the boys will be doing that a lot during the video. If you guys have seen my Underswap uh, If series, um, with Nelly and Gaster, don't worry, I'll be having the boys do that too because that sounds like a lot of fun. Oh god, I'm gonna probably strangle one of them. <laughs> I'm probably like over level one or two, probably three. Some of you are so freaking cute. Huh? And see, he's got the cutest little freckles. Sorry, sorry, those freaking freckles are adorable. And blue, freaking love blue. Sorry, bow, bow, ah, oh, freaking bow. Yeah. Happy theory stream, aka okay, wonderful devil said game side. Oh wow, I didn't think this would be covered because it's so small. You kidding? I'm gonna cover every update. It doesn't matter how small. I can make something small into something pretty lengthy. Trust me. I got a lot to say. Not to mention, hello, a chance to cover more of the boys. Hello, of course I'm gonna cover them. They're so freaking cute. I really enjoy your reaction to the boys. Oh, thank you so much. They are a silly bunch. They are. The update gives you a small glimpse into who the boys are. I don't, if I'm honest, the main demo before this update made me very well. I, I mean, I got to know Jimmy very, very well. I think I actually understand Jimmy extremely well. Extremely well. And Rivet, 100%. I just are so adorable. Oh God, I, I, I'm already in love with these boys. Let's see it. The likes and the dislikes that you are wondering about. It will be answered in the right. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh god, yes, I want to see why he doesn't like yo-yos. <laughs> oh. No, I'm just smashing some silly antic involving a freaking yo-yo, like wrapping around one of them or tripping someone up. Oh my god, that's gonna be hilarious, so funny. Oh my god. Oh, right, where was I? It will be small but entertaining. I, I already, my mind is already racing, if I'm honest. Already thinking of like, what are possible reasonings for each one. The sock collection is, is a sans thing. It's always a sans thing. Every game I play, there's a freaking sock somewhere. And it's always freaking sans. Let's see. Um, also, sock puppets. I'm not from duty, <laughs> Christy feed, but it's a Christy... <laughs> oh, this isn't too much of an answer. It's okay. It's completely fine. I mean, the fact that it's soft puppets makes it hilariously funny. Sans really wanted to scare the person off, and he did. What well down on Sans? I'm like, yeah, it's success. And he did it without like being freaking creepy, aka turning off the freaking eyelids and then threatening a person. Sun is something else, and he will be breaking the fourth wall. Oh girl, for left and right. Yes, yes. Yes! I want him to break the fourth wall. I need him to break the fourth wall. I love that fact about Sans. <laughs> I love the fact that he talks to you directly and says about like, the choices. That reminded me so... It was kind of also the reason why I really liked him in Bonely Hearts Club in the demo for that one because he breaks it. He talks to you directly saying about like what route you want and he's like the only one that does it. I freaking love that. I love fourth wall breaking. Oh, does that mean you love... Me, fourth wall breaking. You're a different story. Go away. Someone smiley face pin. There's a story behind it. Oh my god, yes. I want there to be a story. And he's super attached. Oh, that's so cute. I'm so excited to see that. Oh, he always wears it. So when he goes to sleep or other things that would ruin or slash lose it. Oh, that's so precious. Jimmy's actually a good employee. Yeah, I, he's just playful. I assume he's just honestly extremely playful, though I can be slightly concerned. 
I'm the best massage therapist. It is the one thing where he feels like he can do some good, help and uh, heal others. Oh, bless. He's the only one who brings in the most customers and money for the Lotus Spa. Kevin and Monica. Oh, Monica. Ooh. We all recognize the name Monica. <laughs> Doki Doki, anyone? Oh god, that should be terrifying if it was that Monica. Let's not let's not try that Monica in here. I don't think the skellies will be able to handle that Monica. <laughs> Competing against him a lot and lose. Oh yes. And Jimmy's and Ray is aware of it. <laughs> Only as long as it is friendly competition. Oh my god, I could just talk with the boys all day. Sorry for the long message. No, I love the message. I love learning more about the boys. Feel free to like make a block wall of all the information. I like I'm so interested in all of them. The world building, all the small little details. I freaking love it all. P.S. I'll leave the heights list here. Thank you. I want to know, am I taller than anybody? Okay, tall as. <gasps> Buddy, 6'9". God, he's freaking tall. Sloan, oh my god. 6'6". Six, six. Good lord, Jimmy, 6'4". Six, Eddie is 6'3". Papyrus is 6'1". Theo is 6'1". So, Papyrus and Theo are the same height. That is really interesting that those two are the same size. Axel, 5'6". Aww. Kai is also 5'6". That's good to see that they're also the same size. I love the fact that the two um, dance tail boys are actually like the same size as someone else. Rivet 5'5". Five, five. Damn it! Rivet's taller than me. Dang it. Sans. 5'4". Dang it! Even Sans is taller than me. Bo 5'2". Dash darn it all! And Ray, I'm taller than Ray! <laughs> Yay! I'm taller than him! I'm taller than someone at least. But yeah, if you couldn't guess, I'm 5'1". I am small. I am in between Bo and Ray in size. Gosh, all the boys are taller than me. Bar Ray. But for some reason I imagine Ray wearing some like, a little bit of like wedges or like a little bit of something to give him like the extra height. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that reminds me of like Seattle from like Black Bustler where he goes around wearing like the shoes that have got like the little bit of a heel to make himself feel taller. <laughs> oh, that's so cool though, seeing all their heights. More the, the more stuff I know, the happier I am. I love lore, I love learning more about games and the characters in the world. You should see me constantly bothering dark petals. <laughs> Always asking, curious about things. Getting teased, how dare you. But don't ever stop, I love, I love being teased with information. But thank you so much for the list and yay, I'm taller than one. I won't feel so small anymore. I'll just be like, small to everybody else and Wow, a lot of them can actually pick me up. My god. Oh god, I'm cuddly size. <laughs> My gosh, it's adorable. I'm smiling. I love that fact. Okay, Leo D. Dot Petal said, Bo and Sloan will never not be funny. I freaking love the reactions. They're so freaking cute. I adore them. I love the additional sprites reaction. Kai and Thea are also so adorable. They freaking are. Just getting more and more excited for updates on this game. I am too. I am so freaking excited. That's why I jumped when I saw like the it got an update and there was new stuff. I was like, <gasps> so the second it actually dropped, fun fact, I dropped everything to record it. <laughs> the second I got like the notification, I was in the middle of recording something else and then I just stopped it, saved and just swapped to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem. I'm aware, okay? I really like these games. Leave me alone. <laughs> Happy Theorist Dreamer said, They're quite the fun pair. I do too. Oh my god. I wish I could show the rest of the boys' different reactions. I have so many. They certainly are. Heart. Yay, thank you. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, the boys are so freaking cute. I'm so excited for this. Ah, I'm excited for If Slumber Tale. I'm excited for Day With Me. I'm also excited for like any, any things that get added in. There's so many questions I have for Day With Me since we're on, this is the comment section for Day With Me right now. I have like so many different questions about the boys as well as like the different things I noticed on the sprites since each one of them had like different details. And the fact that the button on like Sloan, okay, and Swap Papyrus really stood out to me because that striking little smiley face cute. And the fact no, that I am now at least feel a tiny bit taller than at least one person. I am happy. My only last question is, is my character an idiot? Because <laughs> I seem to be finding a trend that my character and me don't say eye to eye. <laughs> okay, let's get into the round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so getting happy right now. <laughs> uh, on with the video! Hello, my little stars, and welcome back to If Mafia Fell by the Drought Pedal 16. This bit here is Ezri- uh, Ralsei Drought. <laughs> my bad, I went to call him the wrong thing. As we all know, he is 100% Ralsei and not Ezreal. I swear, he is not lying to my face. Hello, there you puffball! That aside, ahem, you are going to hear the fawn in the background. It is really warm and I don't want to melt in here, so... Yeah, I, I also noticed there's a green, like, outliner on my sprite thing. Look, I I don't know. I'll, I'll try and fix it if I can. If I can't, I can't. My soul is green and I chose a gold rose. Why? Because I'm hoping to deter Dr. Rose and hopefully Dr. Rose will go up for Ezreal instead of me. Yes, I am willing to throw the puff ball in the way, but it, it, understand my reasoning. Ezreal can turn into a god mode, right? Meaning, if anyone tries to do anything, he could probably go absolutely bonkers rage and then beat them up. Not to mention, he probably is more capable than I am, and if anybody tries to go fast around, I'm pretty sure Kara will freaking murder them. We'll see how this goes, won't we? But first, a message from our soul, because our soul tends to, you know, need to have a moment to literally traumatise our character and make them regret living. I'm not always like that. Yes, you are. You're going to cause me to have a horrible nightmare that may or may not result in me being permanently traumatised or result in my near-death experience. Oh, but it's all in the name of love. No excuses. Anyway, our soul is green. Green for kindness. We're going to ignore my dastardly brother calling me that name. That name does not exist. We are known as Princess. Okay. Oh my god. Really, so that's how you warn me about Ezreal? Vines? You're warning me via vegetation. Also, vines? Where are my sleeping beauty? You might as well be. Maybe Prince Charming will kiss you. Oh, shut up. Dreams of vine ensnaring you as you run. You are sprinting to escape. You will bare feet dig into the soft earth beneath you, kicking up grass and dirt. Where do my shoes go? Who stole my shoes? How dare I? How come I'm in a dream with no shoes? What is this? It is a nightmare. I could should at least have shoesies. Where's my shoes? A thorny root erupts from the ground beneath you. Oh god, it's like something of a freaking horror tale. It wraps around your right leg and yanks. How freaking rude! You tumble into the grass, hitting the ground hard enough to make you winded. <gasps> Dastardly vine! Your heart pounds as you scramble to escape, desperate to kick at the vine. How is that going to help? Quick, get cheers! But more come out. They wrap around your legs, your arms, your chest, and eventually your neck. Why has everybody got this obsession with my throat? Excuse you. It was bad enough that sand suffocates me with freaking spicy red smoke. Me nearly drowning in freaking sludge tentacles and darkness and shadows. And then I nearly burnt alive by papyrus. And now I'm getting murdered by vegetation. Mother Nature apparently hates me. How can this be worse? There could be thorns involved. And then I really will believe that apparently my MC is supposed to be a freaking sleeping beauty. Oh boy, Prince Charming is definitely not going to help me. That being said, let's find out. Oh wait, it did say thorny, right? Oh, so it is covered in thorns, never mind. Your heart pounds as you scramble to escape. You desperately kick at the vine, but more come out. They wrap around you. Ooh. They hold you tight, and every time you move, their thorns dig into you. The more you try to escape, the more painful it is. And then you hear the most charming, happy-sounding voice ever. Hello, Twinkle. 
Why, hello, Ezreal, and your eyes fly open. Pain lingers across your skin, you tremble in bed and your heart's pounding and you just want to strangle your soul for giving you a near heart attack experience. How freaking dare you? I need to keep you on your toes besides, who doesn't like vines? They're close to tentacles. Oh my god, my soul has problems. You are afraid to move, terrified of the thorns ripping your skin. Pfft. Thorns, come on. Now, they are painful, but they're the worst things in this world and we are definitely going to see them. Bed. Oh yeah, you're in bed. You're okay, you can move. Slowly shaking, you sit up. You try to take deep breaths, although you hiccup when you breathe in. You glance at the clock and it reads 3.33 a.m. My God. You swallow roughly, your skin tingles like it's been rubbed raw. You could completely throw off your entire schedule if you got up now, so you try to lay back down and you hope you have a sweeter dream. You wake up without issue, surprisingly, the next morning. Oh my God, I do. You make your bed as you do every morning, although you feel more tired than normal. The nightmare lingers in the back of your mind. You're glad you only have one flower box. Oh God, I just realised something. I gave the character rosy soap. I also gave him a floral dress. I also put a flower in their hair. <laughs> and I gave Ezreal a golden rose. <laughs> Without realizing that I was about to fight vegetation and get myself traumatized. Oh, it's fine. It builds a character more. Who knows? Maybe it will make her less stupid. Oh, boy. Anyway... My goodness, my glasses are getting smudged. Eee. You're glad you only have one flower box to look at. You take a peek at the golden roses, half expecting them to crawl across the freaking floor. Alive and satiant, ready to rip you apart. My god. <laughs> Let's see. Um, you wonder if you get pricked by its thorns, would it hurt as badly as it did in your dream? I, it's freaking thorns, what are you expecting? You move sluggishly, even after you drink your chocolate milk, you still feel out of it of sorts. Understandable, I mean, we had a freaking Disney princess moment. Hopefully your morning run will make you feel better. Spoiler alert, it doesn't, you just feel worse when you get back. You take a long hot shower and scrub your ivory skin raw with your rose scented soap because you want to... Look, I didn't know it was going to be flowers. If I did, I probably would chose something completely different. I didn't know at the time it was going to be thorns. I completely didn't take that into account. You try to ignore the feeling of thorns pricking your skin. You scrub and scrub and scrub. Ouch, you scratch your... How did... How did... Oh, freaking heck. Why are you scrubbing so hard? Scrubbing to get that feeling away won't work. Thorns go in. If you scrub, you'll be pushing them in. Mm. Where's my water? I have water. I have lots of water. The blood is immediately sweeping, swept away by the water. This isn't good. What do you mean it isn't good? At least the freaking blood is down the drain and not where a freaking flower you could probably find it and get carnivorously hungry and then threatening about your blood as he wants to see it. If you get the rest, friends, congratulations. You watched my if slumber tale. My god, that flower has got issues. You need to pull yourself together. You had your hot shower and dry, dry off. You work the evening shift tonight, so you have a lot of time to sort yourself out. You finish getting ready. You force yourself to move slowly, carefully. You're in control of yourself, not your nightmares, not your memories. You slip on a floral dress and you shiver, and then you wrap yourself in a blanket. You finish your, you finish your hair later when it's closer to your time to leave. You have hours left in the day before you have to go to work. Okay, so this section right here, I know for a fact I chose drawing when it came to sands painting when it came to wingedings and then I chose crocheting for papyrus do I want to have a knife do I trust my character enough with a knife no my character is too stupid to have weaponry because she won't use it anyway okay we'll give us something safe the pen is mightier than the sword, so we have to write. We love writing. You pick up where you left off in writing. You're halfway filled up your notebook with your current project. You'll need to purchase a new one soon. As you write, your mind shuts off. Your hands are imagining. Your hands and imagination work without focus. And for the next hour and a half, you feel content. You're currently writing a romance. Nee. 
The thing is, though, technically, about skeletons, it is both non fiction but also fantasy. Hmm. It is also romance, though. Non fiction? I'll go with non fiction, why not? You feel much better. You enjoy your hobby. It makes you happy and relaxed, and it's not too expensive to maintain. So it's one of the simpler pleasures you consistently allow yourself. Although you have to admit, you have one other interest. If you were rich, you'd be love to. Okay, so I'm pretty sure what I did here was correct me if I'm wrong. Sans was horseback riding. Wingedings was piano, and I think Papyrus was ballet. But I'm not sure. It could have been Wingedings was ballet and Papyrus was piano. But I don't know. I I know for a fact though I chose horseback for Sans. Hmm. Hmm. Ballet dancing. I could see Ezreal ballet dancing with me. I could see him in a tutu. We'll go with ballet. Lawrence used to always tell you to dream big when you get to school. Don't worry, Lawrence, I dreamed really big. This time I'm after a prince. Can't get any bigger than that, right? Tee <laughs> Perhaps dreaming of dancing isn't big, but when you live paycheck to paycheck, the expensive it it takes to make it happen feels big to you, but it's fine. After all, you're aiming extremely big because you're trying to woo a princey, but you don't know it's a princey. But that's okay. I know he's a princey. <laughs> you sort of pick up on things. Okay, so now we're, I'm going to skip forward a little and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we just visited Daisy in her flower shop, which of course is not really the smartest thing for my character to do after having a nightmare about a giant vine with lots of thorns trying to freaking kill him. But hey, you know, who cares? Live a little! If you get nightmares of deadly flowers, go in a place filled with them! I'm sure it won't cause you to have a little bit of problems later, it's completely fine. Also, I said that the perfect gift for me on this route was flowers. Why not add to it? He threw more salt onto the wound. Ta-ta, all done, she says. She takes a corsage made of green and yellow flowers. So, yellow flowers is because my favourite flower I made for this route was the yellow rose. And green is because the soul is green, for kindness to go with Ezreal. And she tied it around your wrist. You thank her for the corsage. And thank you for your time, she says. You gonna work? Yes. Be safe, she says. You will. You always are. <laughs> Lies. As you leave, you brush past a rose bush and the thorns prick you on your way out. And once you remind you of that dream, the nightmare is lingering on you. Really? A freaking rose bush? He's like, ooh, pretty. <laughs> and you're like, <gasps> I said, why? Look, it's your own fault. You freaking came here. You could have avoided this entirely had you not gone into the flower shop for the day. Send someone else. Send a freaking message. Write it. Slide it under the door. You didn't need to go in. You could have just stood by the doorway and just be like, Wait for every for Daisy to be finished with what she's doing, and then literally just talk across be like, Daisy, hey, how you doing? Um, I'm just gonna stay out here for like five minutes. Don't worry, it's nothing personal, I've nothing against your freaking flowers. How do I not know that the freaking rose bush might be Satan? Did I purposely lean into it or did the freaking bush like reach out and try to touch me? Oh my god, flowers love me. Okay, now for the profile. So, we are, our nickname is Princess. Ignore that one. I didn't say that. My eye color is green. My soul color. My eye color is green. My eye color is pink. My soul color is green. And I have long white hair, tightly curled because there is no purple in this. Because it wouldn't make any sense for us to have purple hair available back then. We didn't get fancy colors till years later anyway. Even if it's a world of fiction. We need to be a little bit realistic here. Scent is roses. Your favourite flower is a yellow rose. This does not make me Dr. Rose. And I do hope that my favourite rose does not make freaking Dr. Rose think that apparently I'm attractive. Because that will be extremely freaking concerning for me. And nobody wants that. I don't know how I feel about dating a serial killer. Then again, it might already be dating one, but I don't know. Oh my god, is one of them a serial killer? 
Oh my god, my mind went places. Then again, killer could technically count as a serial killer, technically. Killer son, so would I date him? Yeah, I'd be totally down for it. Yeah, as long as he doesn't kill me. Then again, he kills his car up. Hmm. Hmm. You only live once, it's fine. Uh, then again, if I'm frisked, technically I would then have a reset button, then it'd be okay. Why am I having this long debate about this? Hmm, then again, Nightmare's the same thing. Yeah, I guess I'd be willing to try at the skellies, regardless of which one it is. Yeah, why not? I, you live once, why not? This, this is world fiction, I can do whatever the hell I want. If it goes bad, it goes bad. If it doesn't go bad, then yay me! Again, why am I talking to myself about this? Ignore me! Right. I'm wearing floral flowers, flowers, more flowers, chocolate flowers. Okay, roses. Okay, we are on Ezreal's route and there is no going back. Tally ho! Okay, so now I'm going to, of course, slip forward so that we find our lovely Fluffball. He should be here somewhere. There is a monster standing under a lamppost. He is tall, easily compared to the tall monsters out from the back swan. He has white fur, long ears, and two curly holes. He wears a pair of black suit pants, a white shirt with a black vest, and black arm bones over top. He stares up at the moon in the sky, a lost look on his face. You walk up to him, and you shyly ask if he's okay, and he looks at you. You giggle. It comes out unbinding. You feel oddly at ease. He grins. Um, hey, there. Do you know this area? You do. Great, I'm lost, particularly so. <laughs> Do you know how to get to a brick wall? You do. The monster looks relieved. Would you? Oh, where are my manners? Howdy. I'm as. I'm Ralsei. Yeah, totally. 100%. Totally, that's your freaking name. Yeah, 100%. You're not freaking lying in my face. 100%. No, no, no. It's fine. As long as he's cute, he can lie, right? You introduce yourself. Miss Twinkle? No, 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 no. Twinkle. You can call me Twinkle. It's fine. Repeats Ralsei. Would you mind showing me the way, he asks. I'm terrible with direction. You smile kindly. You wouldn't mind at all. Ralsei looks relieved. Thank you. If I'm late, my sibling will never let me hear the end of it. You are so happy to help. He chuckles. How lucky for me. I'm almost happy I got lost at- Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. That was smooth. How dare you. His golden eyes are bright under the moonlight because I gotta see it pretty late. Oh my god. <clears throat> oh my god, I'm in for one of those freaking routes, aren't I? Oh my god. I don't have enough water for this. Okay. You blush and demurely look down. Your actor makes him turn his head to cough. <coughs> Strangely shy after making such a remark. Yeah, we're having all your confidence, huh? A warm silence falls between the two of you for several minutes. Do you work around here? He asks you. You answer that you do. Oh, really? What do you do? You're a singer. Rossi looks strangely fascinated. I've never had a job like yours. It looks exhausting. You like it well enough. You ask what kind of work he does. Uh, Rossi glances up at the sky. I mostly help my dad with his, uh, manager of sort. Family business, you know? <laughs> eh, you nod. As you walk, Ralsei asks you more questions about your job. He's seemingly generally interested and you sense no danger from him, so you feel comfortable to answer him. Another one where I have nothing to worry about, where Sansa and freaking Wing Ding. Wee 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 danger, danger, wee 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 wee. Yeah, I had a freaking terrible nightmare with both him and Papyrus. What the hell? <laughs> what? I need to keep you on edge, duh. He's just so freaking cute and fluffy and hot. Go away. You're interrupting the moment. When you arrive at his destination, he thanks you with a grin and holds out his hand to you. When you place your hand in his, he raises it up and brushes the tip of his nose to the back of your hand. You suck in a sharp breath and your stomach flip-flops. It was a pleasure to meet you, Twinkle, says Ralsei. <laughs> yes, same to him. There's a long pause. Neither of you have let go of the other's hand. Oh god, this is a freaking underswap sans moment again. Oh god. I'm not ready for those ones. What? There's no need to him. Come on, calm down. There's a short. There's a. There's a shout further down the road. Oh, thank God! Freaking car is like, brother, stop flirting. Ralty turned his head in the direction of the voice, and he briefly frowned. He lets go of your hand and says, "I hope we meet again." Likewise. Bye, Miss Twinkle. Yeah. <laughs> 
You giggle. Today was a good day. <laughs> oh, really? Huh. I wonder why. Well, that was Ralsei. That was meeting Ralsei, wasn't it? Oh, my. You make it home. Oh, my God. Chapter 3. <laughs> In the city. <laughs> Whew. Okay, then. I will be back when we find Ralsei Rue again. Oh, my God. Quick summary, we nearly died in our sleep because that bullet hair pillow, but it's okay. Intuition saved us and also people got in involved in a party across the street and may or may not have party till they dropped, literally. But it's okay. We're okay. Either way, look, we found the flop ball. That's all that matters. Forget about all the dark and depressing things. It's fine. It doesn't matter. We're just here for the flop ball. <laughs> Moving on. Hello there, Princey. It's Ralsei. What is he doing here? Ralsei's sitting on a bench, a crunched, a crunched up cup of coffee in his right hand. As if sensing your presence, he turns his head and looks right at you. He beams. Miss Twinkle, you can't hold back your giggle. My god, I'm giggly. He stands up from the park bench and tosses the coffee cup into the nearby bin. Good morning. You shyly approach him and turn the greeting. You're surprised to see him in there. Me too, he says. He... <laughs> Me too. <laughs> He froze, frowning. He's abashed. I, um, might have gone lost again. So that's fine. Just keep getting lost. I will always find you. Oh god, that sounds creepy. <laughs> Didn't mean it that way. The look he, you give him makes him quick to explain. I normally go everywhere with my sibling, he hurries to say. I, uh, guess I never paid attention to where we were going or how we get there. <laughs> he scratches the back of his head. I managed to kind of find my way here. Where we met before, and I suppose I hope I bump into you again. Your eyes widen as your cheeks burn. You were so pleasantly surprised by this, albeit you are flustered from how openly he admits it. Woohoo. His golden eyes go round, and he slaps a hand over his mouth. Um, he clears his throat, and he tries out another laugh, although it looks wobbly somehow. Uh, another smile, sorry. Um, I mean, what, what I meant was, he, he seemed like a nice woman, so um, maybe we could help me out again. His expressions become pinched. Wait, that's something like I'm taking advantage of your kindness now. I don't... That wasn't... Oh my god, Ralsei. <laughs> oh my god, you adorable little dork. Oh no, he's meeting my expectations. Oh shit. <sighs> Ralsei shifts his weight side to side. Can we start this encounter over again? Oh my god. <sighs> you giggle again. Yes. Great. Hi, Miss Trinkle. I'm really happy to see you again, he says. Oh my god. You quietly tell him you're happy to see him again, too. C can, can I can I give you, like, a cup of coffee or, or tea? Well, you do have to go on your run. You want to spend more time with him. You almost regret your disguise. You fill with your clothes. Your attire looks raggedy in comparison to Ralsei's pristine and expensive looking clothes. Who freaking cares? The fact that he knew it was you, regardless of the fact the clothes you're wearing literally doesn't make it look like it's you. And he still finds you attractive wearing that? What is your problem? He don't give no shits about the freaking clothes, girl. At all. He cares about the person in the clothes. And I'm pretty sure he probably prefer the clothes not there. Probably. At some point. When he's not super shy. Yes, I threw that in there. I'm leaving it in. You know, see, tug on your shirt, wondering if you stink too. It'll be just your luck. Ralsei knows you fidget. Am I making you uncomfortable? Frickin' no. My hair just makes herself uncomfortable. Don't get offended. Don't feel like you've done anything. It's just totally on her freaking dumbass head. You shake your head, looking down. You quietly admit you're concerned he'd be uncomfortable to be seen with you. Why would he? Freaking offered- Freaking- The boy is flirting with you. If he was uncomfortable, he would not be doing that in the first place. So shut up and stop thinking for yourself. Oh my god. What? That's absurd. You look dashing. Oh my god. You look sharply at him. What? He quickly looks down and clears his throat. Your appearance is fine, Miss Twinkle. Please don't worry about it. I just imagine like his face is just getting redder and redder and redder and redder and he's just like, Ugh! You giggle. Ralsei's 
sprints and squints and looks around. I, I think I got my coffee this way. <laughs> what do you mean you think you got it that way? Are you okay? <laughs> you know the nearest coffee shop is in the opposite direction. You tug on his sleeve. He turns his head back to you. Yes? You point in the opposite direction and tell him there's another coffee place closer. Oh, um, actually, might be best if you lead. <laughs> you giggle. Ralsei gestures for you to leave. You do, walking away with more energy in your step than you did in the morning. You live around here? He asks you. You do. Is it nice? It's... Um... It's not... <laughs> um... <laughs> I like my apartment bullshit. Um... Ralsei nods. Have you always lived in the city? Yeah, I'm not even saying that freaking word for you, Ro Freaking Ezreal Rolsey, you're not getting out of me. Uh-uh, no way, no how, never. You shake your head. You only came here five years ago. Really? Where did you live before? Rune City. The capital? Rolsey is plainly shocked. Why did you move away? I heard that place is wonderful. You stay silent, considering how to respond. You're reluctant to bring up Lawrence. It's a heavy topic. It's the truth, though. You came to the city with Lawrence's partner, Robin. Wait. Yeah, partner is I.K.A. Do we have to bring up Robert? I don't like the mention of Robert. Can we not bring up Robert? We don't talk about Robert. We don't talk about Robert. No, no, no. To search for him. Now it's only you. You carefully answer that it was something you had to do. I get it, he says. Sometimes you have to do things that don't always make sense. He winks at you. Like getting lost in the city and meet a pretty little woman. Oh my god, where are you getting this? Who taught you to do this? my god, your cheeks burn as you look away, to me, like, covering your smile with your hand. Rolsey's golden eyes are bright with warm. He watches your reaction with a small smile. When you meet his gaze again, the warmth is replaced by surprise, and he looks away to cough into his hands and clears his throat. <coughs> Seeing him go from confident to flustered only saves to fluster you more. Oh my god, he's freaking adorable. Oh my god. The two of you arrive at the coffee stand. There's only a couple of people in line. When it's up to you, Rolsey gestures for you to order first. You order chocolate milk. Rolsey chuckles. You and Kara get along. I freaking know. Kara freaking starts busting a move. Rolsey shakes his head and places an order for a coffee with milk and sugar. Lots of sugar. It seems Rolsey has a sweet tooth. We love a guy with a sweet tooth because I love sweets. You both get your drink and start to walk back to the path. I know you probably have to get on your, get on with your day. He says, so I won't keep you much longer, but, um, does he want to walk, want you to walk with him somewhere? But no, no, no. Isn't he lost? I am. He says, however, I have my mirror with me, so my siblings will be able to find me. <laughs> he doesn't need your help. No, no, I, I really was hoping to bump into you again. He admits and clears his throat. <clears> throat> I, I wanted to thank you for your kindness last night. <clears throat> you don't think you did anything to warrant the extra thing? Then maybe I just like you. Oh my god, he just thought I said it. Eee! Oh my god, he actually just said it. The others take ages to freaking say it. Well, I mean, they do say it technically. It sounds it's like more like... Like, for, for, like, for Papyrus. Papyrus is like... It, <laughs> Sans has made you like really clear that he finds you like very attractive, but you have to like go on a date with him first. You know, you know that he's physically attracted to you. With, with... <laughs> Why am I explaining this? I'm just making. I'm digging my hole. I'm digging my grave over here. Ignore me. Ignore me. I. Pff. Moving on. Topic change. Topic change. Quick. Quick reading. Go back reading. Forget. Re forget what I said. You gasp softly. His eyes bulge and he frantically moves his free hand. Wait. Um. Uh, not. I mean, do you want to get ice cream this weekend? Like friends, friends, right? Friends, we should be friends. Friends? Oh, now you boost my bubble. Now I'm sad. <laughs> friends? He never repeats since you're nice, and I got a good feeling about you. I suppose doesn't doesn't have to be ice cream. The dessert shop has other options. You smile. That sounds nice. You want to be friends? Great, he says. Do you know Molly Sunrise? You nod. It's an upscale dessert shop on the upper side of town. I'll make sure to follow maps so I don't get lost. <laughs> he says, meet you at noon. You happily agree. You're glad you don't have to work this weekend. 
You finish your run and go back home. Oh my god, I got friend zoned. Are you freaking kidding me? Did he just freaking friend zone my ass? He just friend zoned me. Oh my god, I got friend zoned. I know that he's he's attracted, but he freaking just friend zoned me. What the hell? Whoop. MC, congratulations. Finally happened. One of you got friend zoned. I knew it was going to happen one day. Unfortunately, it was to you. You're not the stupidest one. But it's okay. You have my support. Maybe one day you'll find love. <laughs> Here we are at chapter four. So, yep, I will be back, guys, when I find the fluff ball. I will be back. Okay, so I finally found the Prof 4 had a near-death experience, but that is fine. It was worth it just to get here. It's fine if I nearly died. You wake up refreshed and energised, and you take extra care in your morning routine before you meet up with Rolsey. Once satisfied with your opinion... A opinion? I'm never satisfied with my opinion. How dare I? Appearance. You head out. You take a trolley bus to reach your destination. You don't want to risk arriving sweet sweaty, so you arrive earlier than planned, and Rolsey is waiting for you outside the shop. Ralsei is waiting for you outside the dessert shop. The tall monster casually leans against the brick wall. He's in similar attire to the last time you met him, only today he's wearing a yellow tie. It matches well with his golden red eyes. Oh my god, I need to give him a yellow tie in future. He notices you right away and he smiles at you. Hey, Miss Twinkle. You immediately smile back and echo his greeting. As you approach, you catch a whiff of something floral in the air. You notice he's holding a small cigar. A freaking small cigarette. Oh wait, no, it smells nothing like a cigarette. The smoke is, I mean, is strangely a bright yellow. So long as he's not gonna freaking suffocate with me, I'm totally fine with it. And it seems to be the source of the floral scent. Magrills, he explains, when he notices your curious expression. Magic flowers my mother and siblings grow together. May a sibling grow together. When bird, the smoke soothes magic. Soothes magic? Mm-hmm. Humans do something called incense, right? You had heard some humans burn candles or incense to reduce stress. Ralsei crushes the mirror roll in his palm. He brushes the debris out of his palm and into the street. Think of it like that, then. Are you ready for something sweet? You mean, definitely. They're technically he's sweet. Can't I just have him? And not be in the friend zone? He gives you a small smile. Oh, I'm not sure the desserts inside will be as sweet as you What the Okay, seriously, did his dad teach him to do this? Is this what his dad told him? It's like, when you meet someone, who is he picking this up from? Is it freaking Sans? Did Sans tell him to do this? What the hell? Who told him this? Who is responsible for this? Which one of you was it? Who is it? Who's the guilty culprit around me? Which one of you is the notorious thing? <laughs> the notorious person? Was it freaking Kara? Did Kara do this? How does Kara even know how to do half of this? Oh my god, what is happening? Oh my god, where's my water? This is going to get too much again. Oh no, I'm not sure the desserts inside will be as sweet as you, though. Your eyes widen as your cheeks burn. Ralsei's eyes bulge as if now realizing what he said. He clears his throat. Oh, uh, well, um, uh, let's, let's head in, huh? Oh my god, just tell me you want to date me already. Mallory's surprise is a brightly colored dessert shop. Splashes of orange, rose pink, yellow, and purple cover most of the shop. Rows of ice cream cakes, macaroons, pies, and many more sweet delights are on full display. All the cases are magically enchanted to keep the food fresh for a very long time. You weren't certain how long you could. How long you could. Never afford such an enchantment. But you did hear the boss offhandedly tell you it would keep a pie fresh for a month. The Black Swan did not have desserts. Often too much sugar and sauce tend to lead to the patrons getting sick in the bathroom. Or so you've been told, at least. The surprise, Mallory Surprise does not have any place to sit. It is intended to purchase your food, then leave. So most of it is designed to be held, handheld. Rolsey knew take place, um, place an order. Rolsey gets a triple star, butter scotch, ice cream, freaking coat. My god, that is freaking big. Okay, well, I want chocolate. Chocolate, give it to me. Okay. With your treat in hand, you both decide to enjoy the nice weather and go for a walk while eating. You take the lead, recalling that Rolsey isn't familiar with the city. You decide to head to a less crowded part of the city so the two of you don't have to compete for space on the sidewalk. Excuse you, character. Be smarter. If you're closer together, it means that you can hold hands. Well, you're just 
Look, if you want to get with him, get m Look, he's clearly interested. Do something. Well, Papyrus, Papyrus is like freaking super shy, okay? He's not as forward. This one, on the other hand, he's giving you all the freaking signals. He's like, go, 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 red sign, re freaking green, green, green for goal, green. And you're just like, no, 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 let's just, let's just get some space. This is why you be, you having a mind of your own is an issue. My God. There is a comfortable, companionable silence between the two of you as you eat. Despite the fact his ice cream cone is larger than your head, Rossi makes quick work of it. By the time you're halfway through your chocolate ice cream cone, he's already licking his fingers clean. You should have ordered two, he sighs. You nervously hold yours out to him, a silent offer to share. He looks genuinely tempted. His throat clears. Uh, no, thank you, though. You withdraw your offer. Rossi pulls out another Mario. Do you mind? You shake your head. He breathes out a small plume of fire, igniting as the two of you walk. He said it was similar to what humans do with incense to help with stress, so you ask him if he's stressed. Everyone is stressed, he says casually. He smiles at you. But it's better when I'm in the city. Does he not live in the city? Uh, not exactly. Yeah, not exactly. I live under the freaking mountain. In the kingdom of Fel, where freaking cuckoo la la land and cuckoo papa. No, wait, Asgard's not as bad as he in the CIU. I can't remember. I know, like, Tori, Tori is something. Not a, actually allowed in the city. Yet somehow you sneak out. He raises an eyebrow at that. Strict parents and all, he says. Ah, uh, you can relate to that. Yeah? You're, you hesitate. You haven't talked to anyone about your past. Lawrence is the only one who knows that because he lived alongside you. You absolutely rub for your hands. Whatever. Would it really be so terrible to tell him? You quietly admit you hadn't been on speaking terms with your parents. Strict? Rolsey inquires. In a sense. You remain vague. Not wholly on purpose. You don't know how to explain it. You never had to put in words. Thinking about it makes you feel deeply uncomfortable. Like wearing an itchy sweater and you aren't allowed to scratch. Eek. He studies your face. Clarity comes over him and his golden eyes widen briefly. Then soften. I understand, he says. You meet his gaze, searching to see if he truly does. You see discomfort revac- reflect back at you. It's enough to make you smile. There's no warmth or joy to your smile. Rather, it's one of bitter relief. Here's the shitty parents, Ralts, who dryly says, and he holds up his Mario roll to you like a wine glass. You bump your chocolate ice cream cone against it. You both mirthfully celebrate your childhood. You still live with them? He asks you. No, you and your brother run away. Wow, how old? You were 12, he was 17. Ralts's eyes widen. You were both kids? Where did you go? I told you about Rune City. You, me. You explained that you and your brother ran to Rune City. Your brother had saved enough over the years to get a little apartment. On your own? You two? You two were completely on your own. Ralsei is gaping at you as, as children. Not just that. They were alone as children. Malnourished. Like malnourished. Super skinny. Barely any anything on them. The, the state of them was horrific. How even did they manage to get that far, you know? Let alone recover after all that. You shrug. It wasn't like either of you had a choice. You'd both be dead if you stayed. That's incredible, he says, glancing down and away from you. I could never. You never know what you're capable of until the moment comes and there's a gun aimed at your blank. Maybe, he says. Again, you don't know what you're capable of until a freaking bullet is aimed at your butthole. Just saying you'll want to run. Yes. Um, let's see. Does Ralsei still live with his parents? Yes, he says. Then focuses out a short laugh. <laughs> Father is a difficult man. Pff, pff, difficult. Ha, that's putting it lightly, Ralsei. That's putting it like a teddy bear for it wants a hug. And I'm talking about the big ferocious gr grizzly bears. Hard to say no to him. Hard to... He gives you a small shrug. You get it. It's more suffocating than anything that he says. You wouldn't think it. Mother keeps a pretty home, but I feel like I can only breathe when I'm outside of it. You understand. It's like walking on eggshells. Yeah. Huh. I knew your soul felt nice. Who would have thought we'd kinder? You got a hobby? You're right. 
He grins. He's told to me and frightens. Really? I actually do that too. Wow, convenient that you always seem to do the same thing I'm doing, don't you, Ralsei? You're like the perfect and possible companion for me. I want to be more than friends with you. I am not liking the fact that we are not getting romancy. <laughs> I appreciate the friendship. Can we get more flirty? I know, and everybody else is like, Twinkle, you've got flirty on the other one. I know. He, he'd been flirting with me. I am been doing nothing back. Excuse you. Oh, it, it's, 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 you asked Swarovski what he's currently working on. Actually, I'm writing a non-fiction. Wow, he's doing the same exact thing that I'm doing. You can't resist laughing at that. You're doing the exact same thing. Golly, he says. I feel like I found myself. <gasps> was he about to see his soulmate? Oh my god. He was going to see soulmate, didn't he? No, no, no. You can't just halfway fr freaking stop during that. I don't care. He's not allowed to. He was going to say soulmate. Dot pedal 16. Was he about to say soulmate? Confirm or deny? Please. Was he about to say soulmate? Soulmate is such a strong word. The fact that he went to go say it already. None of the others have said that. Not this early. Uh-uh. He was going to say it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just like, ee. Soulmate! Yes! I can't wait for like one of the characters in Slumber Tale to say that you're a soulmate. I could say it. Shut up, Gus! Why are you here? Go back to Andrew Swap! Oh, but I like bothering you. I don't care. Now's not the time. Go away! I'm so sorry about him. He tends to pop up now. Since obviously I have to wait till Andrew Swap is done before I can get rid of him. You're never getting rid of me. Watch me! Anyway. Does he? It was soulmate, innit? He stops himself and gives you a funny look. Oh, uh, we uh, seem to get along well so far, huh? Yes, we do. A lot, a lot. I like you. Come on, character. Now's your chance. Tell him that you like him. Come on. He asks his tone, a tinge nervous. You think so? What do you mean you think so? How freaking dare you? This is why you are stupid. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And everybody wonders why I give the freaking main character such a hard time. She is denying me cute moments. <clears throat> good, he says. That's good. Oh my god. You reach a point in the road where you need to decide where to leave the two of you. Wait, I was told I... So Swamp Park, something happens in Swamp Park, but I don't know if this is for Gaster. Hold on. Okay, there was something. I remember specifically a comment from Val Petal saying about Swan, the Swan Park. I don't know if that's going to change anything, but let's go for Swan Park this time. I don't know if it's it's like it happens in this route or if it happens in maybe Wingerding's route. I don't know. So I, I'll i just save in two places for this one. That way, if I need to go back for the other one, I can. We'll save here. Yes, everybody, my saves are messy. Don't judge me and save here okay two saves okay now we're gonna click the swamp park you also all see if you like swamps the pretty little menaces i love them he says oh my god i'm glad that you love them swans are so freaking pretty but my god do they get aggressive <laughs> best dads though hashtag swans are best dads you let out a small snort of that. Swans are graceful to watch. However, they can get aggressive. Oh, yeah, but they get really freaking aggressive. You do not touch their babies or they will freaking come for you. Papa will kill you. <laughs> you have yet to be attacked by a swan, but you have seen them go after others. You distinctly recall one morning you were whistled at by an older man. The man ended up straying too close to a group of swans while whistling at you. And by consequence, was immediately attacked and pecked at. Understandably, you get too close to them, they don't like it. That being said, I just love how aggressive swans are. <laughs> They're so cute. There have been a couple of times where you run into a group of swans to avoid being followed. Oh my god, yes. Use the animal kingdom to defend yourself. You really are a Disney princess. Oh my god, I am a Disney princess. Holy moly. Maybe I'm actually Odette from Swan Princess. Oh my god. Wow, I'm like all the Disney princesses in this, aren't I? I'm freaking Sleeping Beauty and I'm freaking Odette from the Swan Princess. What is this? Oh my god, it is a Disney. This one's turning into a Disney episode. Oh my god. Also, Beauty and the Beast. 
Even though technically, to be fair, Israel is very attractive as a fluffball. So yeah, definitely three Disneys, all rode into one so far. Wait, does that make Kara Stitch and Ezreal Lilo? Oh my god. <laughs> Cause it's a little monster that he took in. <laughs> and that he joined the family. <laughs> Am I really going to keep this in? Yes, I am. Forget it. Forget it. I'm doing it. For some reason, they never minded your presence. A lot of animals are like that with you. Lawrence told you it's because of your soul. You smile at Ralsei and start to guide the two of you to the park. You take him through the alleyways and off the, cr the crowded sidewalk. You really, really know your way around the city, huh? Ralsei asks. You have to. Do you always like to take the alleyways? In the day, you try to avoid them at night. Ralsei frowns at that. Why? Oh my god. Child, you really have been living inside of a mountain the, your whole freaking life, haven't you? It's because it's dangerous. And always, they get dark. You just sit to a lamppost on the sidewalk, and the lights of the lamppost rarely reach into alleyways. You don't have a portable light? Do I look like I'm rich? Hmm? Huh? You frown your brow. Unfortunately, you do not. They're not. Ralsei stops himself and scratches his cheek. Are they too expensive? Most magical items have a steep cost. It's not something you can splurge on. Oh, he says. You shrug. It's always been this way. I. Future Twinkle here for all those confused what in the earth is going to happen in this next scene. So, plain and simply, at the start of chapter 3, we are woken in the middle of the night by the sound of gunshots. We scribbly look out a window and discover that the apartment complex across from us is getting raided. And men, women, a lot of people dying. And at the end of it all, a few men are literally dragged off into the middle of the night into a black van. And that's where this is technically associated and talking about. So, go check out Wingedings for that scene. There's a warm tingle in your chest. Watch it, Johnny. Who's Johnny? Who in the earth? The harsh voice comes from outside the alleyway. Sing a shiver of disgust down your spine. You immediately press yourself against the brick wall and push Ralsei behind you. He jumps from your touch. He doesn't fight against you. What are we doing? You inch to the end of the alleyway and peer around the corner. There are a few... Oh, God. A vice standing outside a black fan. Oh, God, no. A familiar black fan. Oh, good Lord. It's the one you saw the other night, the one that used to kidnap those young men. What's going on? Ralsei tries to step out, and you immediately grab his arm and shove him back behind you, shushing him. He gives you a confused look, and you quietly point to the Vi men. Ralsei frowns. Thankfully, he doesn't try to step out again. You continue to watch the scene unfold from behind the corner. The men are stationed outside a small hardware store, two of them standing outside the van, each of them puffing a cigarette. Oh, God. You flick your butt at me again and I'll bust your chop. Oh, God, no. Threatening one of them. Don't snap your cap, a rookie, sneers the second one. Miss your drill this morning. What the hell? I ain't got the time for it nowadays. This fucking overtime is bullshit. Why we gotta deal with you, kids, or some... <laughs> oh, my God. What even is happening? Are they gonna kill someone? I wouldn't say that the second one says mildly amused by the first one's temper. We get to live less than- Oh god. What is even happening here? Don't rag me. Would you rather fight that ugly fight? Who are they talking about? The first one grimaces. Eh, hop in the ring. Bet he'd give you an, a face as, as handsome as his last. What are they goddamn talking about? Well, no. They what? Monsters. Who the heck are they talking about? Are they talking about Sans, Wingedings, or Papyrus? What in the earth is happening here? Are they talking about Asgore? Hell no, I ain't ever a mother could love a face like that. Ain't that true for all monsters? Oh my god, uh, disgusting. Ralsei's right here. The two snicker at that. <laughs> a third, fourth, and fifth mafios exited the hardware. They are carrying a person who is tied up and gagged. The first two open the van door, and all five of them wrestle with the victim inside. It doesn't take them long, and then the van doors are slammed shut and speed off down the street. Oh my god, I just witnessed a kidnapping. What were they actually talking about? Hold on, let me read that again. What is happening here? So apparently somebody messed up something, and apparently then one of them is talking about, like, oh, would you rather fight the monster? On the 
earth is happening? You witnessed yet another kidnapping. Rosie placed a hand on his shoulder. Are you okay? You're shaking. You had not noticed. Arms are wrapped around you and Rosie pulls you into him, holding you close as he soothes. Suddenly says, it's okay. He rubs a hand on your upper back and Rosie's smells like marigolds and dandelions. They're all gone. You take a deep breath and you count to three and you let out slowly. You know them? He asks. You tell him they recently raided your area. You explain how they kidnapped a lot of young men in the apartments across from you. Rosie's arms tighten the... His voice is low, and he says, much like, we're four. Do I freaking know? Look, something about replacing shipment or something. Kidnapping, I don't freaking know. Freaking bodies hit the floor. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Organ trafficking? Take your pick. There's an endless amount of stuff they could do with them. But they were specifically men. I don't know. I... I don't know. <laughs> God damn it. You aren't certain. You think it's related to human trafficking. Do you want to go to the police? You can't hold back your bitter snort at that. The police will never help, especially not you. Are you safe at home, he asks you? Safe enough. A somber silence falls like a heavy blanket around you two. Miss Twinkle? Ralsei whispers, I want you to have something. He pulls away from you. He digs out something from his suit pants pocket. It's a handheld mirror. This is an enchanted mirror, he says. It can act as a way to communicate. I have another one at home, and I share this connection with my sibling. I want you to have this one. That thing is slightly more expensive than all the buildings in your neighborhood. For some peace of mind, he says. If you get in any trouble, you can contact me. He pauses and mumbles. Not any trouble, any time really. You don't have to hesitate. He places it in your hand and folds your fingers over it. Please, he asks you. You give him a small smile. Okay, for him... His eyes shine like the dawn, his whole demeanor brightening. Thank you, Miss Twinkle. You tell him that Miss is not necessary. Twinkle, he repeats with a smile, widening. My companion. Hey, it's better than just being in the friend zone. So I literally just freaking witnessed somebody getting freaking kidnapped, and I have no clue why they want that man either. <sighs> but hey, at least now Rodsey knows about what's going on. I think I'm actually a lot happier that he knows what's going on. So, I don't know. <sighs> because if I think logically, me getting information at the flower shop, it's just like, oh, it's Dr. Rose again. Yeah, I don't necessarily have to go to the flower shop to get information on that, because I'm pretty sure Daisy just tells me that there was something happening over there. The place I was, you know, the place that I was going to take him. So I still get the clue for that one, I think. I'm not sure. Either way. Um, yeah. As much as I like the fat rolls he was holding as clothes, my brain kind of just shut down. Because... You know, it just... I can't even... God... Meh, 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 meh. Dr. Pals, can you explain a bit more like what they were saying there? I was having like so much trouble actually understanding what their issue was. I understand that apparently somebody done something and had messed up. Is it because they shot one of the men so they didn't have like the full amount of people they needed? I don't freaking know. My brain. My brain. My brain. My god. Mm. God, when I saw this couldn't get any more messed up. It just gets more messed up. God damn it all! This is what happens when I listen to advice. I get traumatized. Okay, let's go find. Let's, let's, de -de 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 -de. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now here at chapter five. I, I don't. Maybe it was Hey, my brain. Let's just keep going, shall we? Let's just, let's just, yeah. Let's just keep going. Yeah. Let's just, let's just go. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to include this in because I'm really interested to see how exactly uh, things go involving Wingerdings because Wingerdings does talk about our soul. So I am curious to see what happens when we're not like actively trying to get with any of the boys with him. 
like with Sans Papyrus or him, like what does he think of our soul? Like what are they planning to do? So this is where we are right now. Wingedingus has just told them that apparently he found something interesting in the early morning. His lip is curled at the end. I met that soul today, he says in a light tone. Uh, the one that saw you? Sans asks. Did you deal with them? Papyrus inquires. No, says Wingedings. Sans snores. Don't tell me the bag of flesh escaped you. I swear to freaking God, Sans, I'm going to clout you. I wouldn't say that, Wingedings says in an even tone, his smile stretching. You look too damn smug. What the? What do you do? Fuck him first. Sans rolls his sleeves up. Go get tested, Rippers. I swear to freaking God, I'm going to strangle you. Wingedings chuckles. He waits until both of his brothers turn their head to look at him, so that way he can see their reaction. Her name is Twinkle, says Wingedings. Papyrus lets out a, oh, Wingedings nods to his brother. I didn't want to take away, uh, well, ugh, I didn't want to take away one of your workers, baby bones. Appreciate it, says Papyrus. I like Twinkle. Oh, thank God, my freaking boss likes me. Thank you, Papyrus. Always, always sweet Papyrus to the rescue. Then I will leave her in your care, says. Keep her out of our business and I'll leave her alone. Oh, shit. <laughs> she ain't a, enough of a threat, asks Sans. While I dislike loose ends, says Wingerding slowly, I dislike upsetting our baby bones even more. Oh, my God. Look at you. Best big brother. Look at you. Putting your brother's feelings for it. So proud of you. You do not need to keep calling me that. Aw, is baby bones getting grumpy? Time for a nap. I let it go once a day. I will not let it go again, says Papyrus. When you think the sounds of strange looks, baby bones. Papyrus nods as if accepting the reaction. He raises both of his hands and vermilion magic flares to life and engulfs his hands as he conjures long magic bones. Oh no, not the baby bones magic, Sans marks. However will we survive, says Wingedings teasingly, and Papyrus tilts his head. Wingedings and Sans chuckle to themselves until they realize they can no longer move. There is a green outline around their bodies and they immediately stop laughing. Wingedings clears his throat. Um, dearest brother? And die taught me a new trick, says Papyrus. You won't be able to run away. Sans and Papyrus. Sans and Wingedings look at one another, silently coming to an agreement. Death before dishonor, Wingedings says solemnly. He smiles wickedly. Baby bones. And then, of course, Papyrus... Only Papyrus was seen for the rest of the game. Unfortunately, a moment of silence for Sans and Wingedings, who, unfortunately, ended up being dusted by Papyrus. He, he didn't really dust them, but it would have been funny. I mean, not really funny, but you get what I mean. Oh god, just imagining Papyrus be like, And now for you, dear brother, throws him in the void. And he's like, No, brother, you can just stay there and think about what you've done. You give me time out in here every so often, now you get a time out too. Why am I getting thrown here? Because you were just as bad as him, if not worse. Here we are, finally at last, at chapter 6. My goodness. Okay, well, I'll be back when we get to the past with Ezreal. Alright. Now, before we continue, I do have a question for Dark Petals, 16. Does it matter if I don't get all the clues, or should I go backtracking through Sans, Papyrus, and Wingedings, um, saves? Go to the Swan... The Swan Lake? Then go to Rosie's? Also, sorry, I'm out of breath, because... I literally had to go chasing after Poppy. A long story. Poppy! Oh my god! Hey, I'll live though. <laughs> Whew. Whew. I'm okay. You have any panic? I'll live. Oh my god. Anyway, um, we just headed back home. We apparently, what happened was we spent time with Papyrus. Um, since he invited us to stay over to go to the Black Swan, you know, when nobody was working, because he wanted to learn how to use the appliances, we helped him. Then, of course, we got to meet Sans and Wingedings again. And apparently, pretty much to my understanding, they just don't want me messing with their stuff. I'm supposed to just keep my nose out of stuff. But Papyrus has indeed told me to come in 
and to come in on that certain day so that way I don't get dragged into all the mess that's going to happen back at the apartments. Which I find very interesting. I'm still being protected by them. So, yeah. Suspicious. But yeah. <clears throat> Either way, do I need to like backchat and witness that kidnapping or is it fine to like not have witnessed it in all the different routes? Just curious. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> anyway, you take a long a hot shower. It lasts a lot longer than usual to scrub the yolk out of your hair. You end up needing to pause to clean out your drain. Unfortunately, you have to go for a second shower, but you are clean at long last. You dry off and change into your short night dress. Thankfully, papyrus pat food because the fight that managed to stay uh, the food before the fight that managed to stay unharmed in the wall. You decide to eat it as your dinner. Before you can get to the chance, you hear an odd sound like tingling bells. It chimes from your nightstand and you follow the noise and see the magical mirror that Ralsei gave you. It is shining and you pick it up. Ralsei appears in the reflection and you immediately flush and start to fiddle with your wet hair. Hey, he greets you. My siblings and I are casually moving now. Wanna join us? Uh, you are pretty tuckered out and tomorrow you'll have a long, long day considering it's time put up posters but yeah you want to see him you do you really really do you get dressed and towel dry your hair more once certain it won't drip your hair out your head out you ugh, my god <laughs> you head out to the movie theater on the upper part of town i'm not coming out any of this you see Ralsei standing outside he's easy to spot as one of the few monsters in the crowd and there's a human standing next to him a young man woman you're not certain. Their features are quite ambiguous. Their chestnut brown hair is pulled back into a low ponytail and their bright red eyes flicker over to you. They're dressed similar to Ralsei. Ralsei beams as soon as he sees you and his eyes brighten. You can feel your heartbeat skip. A shy smile on your face as you hurry over to him. Ralsei reaches out to you and as soon as you are within reach he pulls you into a tight hug. Hey, he says softly and you quietly return his greeting oh my god someone clears his throat <coughs> <coughs> Ralsei stiffens and pulls away he clears his throat and sheepishly apologizes sorry Sib um Twinkle this is Kara my sibling Kara this this is Twinkle hi says Kara they look up and down hmm you look surprisingly normal thank you if that is what you accept as a compliment you're welcome Oh my god, Kara, you ass. Kara! Scolds Ralsei. Eh! Goes Kara, he squints at you. You look like you grew up in the hikes. You're a country girl? Does it matter? It doesn't, says Kara. Merely asking, why? Why well, start to set up the question? Why ask the question? I see we're at a standstill here, says Kara. I like it. You like chocolate? Yes, you like chocolate. You drink chocolate milk every morning. It's literally your favorite thing to drink. You drink chocolate milk every morning. I love you, says Kara. What? Ralsei squalls. You can't confess your love every time someone says they like chocolate. I feel like kindred soul in this one, says Kara. We were meant to be. No, you, you, Ralsei spritz. Step aside, little brother, says Kara. Kara winks at you. Wanna turn this into a date? No! Ralsei smacks Kara's back. You pointedly scuff closer to Ralsei. I see how it is, says Kara, then smiling. All right, I'll let it go for now. You better, Rolsey grumbles. Uh-huh. Oh, well, I tried, says Kara. They look entirely unbothered. Ready to watch the movie? Rolsey sighs. Sorry about them. It's fine. The three of you watch a family-friendly movie. The movie is awful atrociously feels too small of a word. It's boring. You're not lonely feeling this. Kara makes a noise of disgust 50 minutes in. We paid money for this garbage. It might get better, says Ralsei, although he doesn't sound very hopeful. It's offensively dull, says Kara. That's not nice, Kara, says Ralsei. I know, they said. They are seated between the two. You are seated between the two brothers, per Kara's insistence. Oh, God. Why am I sitting in between the two of them? Why did Kara insist? Oh, God damn it! Kara's having fun! Kara's gonna wind him up! This forces you to be much more involved in their bickering than you would want to be, and Kara leans across to swat at Ralsei. Awful pick! Ralsei flicks her nose. It could get better, give it a chance. It could also not get better, Kara points out. They shrug and 
We settle into their seat. Oh no, the main character is sad. Boo hoo. Oh no. You more sleep repeats and then something surprising happens. The main character who you saw was going to be the main character gets stabbed from behind. Kara lights up like a child given a new toy and Voltsy meanwhile loudly gasps. Um. How about we just... You know what? Widen our eyes. I thought this was a family movie. Ralsei is actually horrified. Car cackles. This is fantastic. I can get behind this. I'm so sorry, Twinkle. Ralsei says nervously. I really... It's okay. You've seen worse. Ralsei relaxes. Are the insistent that you're fine? Who do you think will, will be the next to go? Car asks you. Hmm. The movie pre premises as previously described to you by Ralsei is about a group of classmates going camping over the summer to celebrate their lost summer before adulthood. A coming age type movie. The characters are all bland and stereotyped. Jock character, nerdy character, prick character, pessimistic cheerleader. Hmm. They now want to keep the pretty to last. So normally it's the nerd. Interesting. Says Kara. Kara leans back in their seat. We'll find out. Sit back and enjoy the gross fest. They say brightly, Ugh, goes Ralsei. You give Ralsei a concerned look. When Ralsei notices you look, he reaches out to take your hand and give it a squeeze. Your cheeks warm. You squeeze his hand back. Thankfully, in spite of your worries, Ralsei stopped being bothered by the gore pretty quick. Which is good, as this movie has a lot of it. A startling amount, actually. This is surprising that this is even showing in theatres. The three of you watch the horror movie that becomes increasingly absurd as it goes on. Kara adds clever commentary, and even Ralsei begins to snidely chime in when the characters do something stupid. Ah, like me. You and I... Oh god, now he really is meeting all my expectations. Why walk towards the wrestling bush alone? Kara shrewdly asks. When the bush unsurprisingly had the serial killer popped out, Ralsei sighs. I refuse to believe everyone in this world could be that dumb. <laughs> You're trying to rule one of the stupid ones. Trust me, they can always get stupider. You clearly haven't visited pub. You clearly haven't met my... Have you met main character number one from Underfell F? I can assure you, they can get stupider. There's a lot of times. A lot of times. Character does dumb things. This one is no exception. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> oh, bless me. Car points to the screen. The character was sober, no excuse. I don't know. She must be on something. She tripped over like five roots. You know, roots are deadly. Ralsei studies the movie as the character proceeds to trip over air. Huh, maybe you're right. I mean, Car goes, they can't show underage drinking, right? Against the rules. Yeah, mass murder, that's okay, but drinking, nah. Clearly cross the line. A very important one. The sibling sigh. The type of commentary continues on. Car and Ralsei will prompt you to join in, which you do, and in turn, that would have been a boring movie, it turns into a very fun experience. While Ralsei and Car bicker, it's clear they both love each other. Ralsei will affectionately part Car's head, and Car will go around you to give Ralsei's shoulder a squeeze. In moments like these, they remind you of how you and Lawrence would act. You haven't been to theatres since then. At the end of the movie, it's late enough that you know you should head home. Are you sure you can't stay any longer? Kara asks you. You have work tomorrow, so no. Boo, where do you work? They ask you. The Black Swan. That place serves some great food, says Kara. They nudge Ralsei. Ralsei offers you a warm, thank you for coming out. You lower your gaze and mumble you were happy to be, happy to do so. It's late by the time you make it back home. It's been a long day, a fun day, but a busy one. You change into your short night dress and crawl into bed. As you close your eyes, you find it hard not to compare the relationships you've seen. Car and Ralsei, Sounds Papyrus and Wingerdings, they all clearly care for one another. You wonder, you wonder what Lawrence would make of them. You wonder what they would think of him. Lawrence. Oh God, absolutely freaking not. We're out of here, but bye. No more trauma for me. Ta-ta, farewell. So here's the thing. I went to work. I learned the papyrus was lying to me because they really don't need me in. But, it turns out while I was there, you know, cleaning the silverware like the Cinderella I am in this one, two royals decided to sneak up behind me and are currently by here with me. 
it's Ralsei and Kara. Kara casually greets you with a hello, fellow chocolate lover. Ralsei semi casually puts his arm around your shoulder and you can barely feel it. It's clear he's hovering it. Why are you hovering it? There's no need. You don't need to do that. Music, are you trying to death in me? Yes, I'm totally trying to do that. My god, behave. But why are you hovering it? It's fine. You can touch me. I'm not like freaking delicate. You can barely feel it. It's clearly he's hovering it in case you want to pull away. You swallow roughly, your heart pounding in your chest as you quietly shift closer to him. Oh my god. When he f when he feels you press your back and side into him, he lowers his arm fully. My god. Character, seriously, just take a hold of his fluffy hand. Put it down now. It's fine. Look, you want him, he wants you, he's signalling, you're signalling. If he's not going to do it, you do it. Oh, let me take control. This is why I don't let you freaking... Mm. <laughs> My god. You can't fight the gigglers. You shyly focus on polishing the silverware. Forget about polishing the silverware. You've got a man's arm around you. The prince of your dreams. And you're just like polishing the freaking silverware. Woman, focus on him. You two are adorable, says Kara. It makes me both happy as a sibling and disgusted as a single person. Oh, it's okay, Kara. Also, come on. You ask them what brings them here. You t you fr <clears throat> really? That's the reaction? Oh, you two look too adorable. It's okay, Twinkle. We're almost at the end. We're almost at the end. Don't strangle this MC. It's fine. It's fine. Why is she a little bit more stupid this time? Why is she not taking the initiative? Oh my god. I mean, because he's been flirting this whole time. So we'd stop by and spice up your day. Oh my god, yes, Kara. A good thing too. Polishing silver, there isn't enough money in the world to make me do that. Is this what you normally do? Raltzy inquires. You explain the situation. Either you've got an idiot for a boss or he lied to you. Correct, Kara. He lied to me. You frown. Papyrus is not stupid. You don't, you don't think he'd lie to you. Either. It's probably possible he made an honest mistake. Car makes a non-commutual noise. Wait, huh? Papyrus, is that his name? Yes. Papyrus Gaster? Uh-huh. Huh. Goes Car. You ask Car if he knows Papyrus. Uh, if they know Papyrus. Car shrugs. We met a few times when... You live in the Fell Kingdom, you get the chance to meet all sorts of monsters. Right, uh, <coughs> Ralsei? Yeah, says Ralsei slowly. From what I remember of Papyrus, he's not the type of monster to, um, I don't think he lied to you out of malice. I'd be surprised if this was an honest mistake since he's normally very, you know, put together. <laughs> See what I did there? Office car. Organized, agrees Ralsei. Hmm. What are you doing after work? Asked Kara. Want to catch another movie? There's a thriller airing. You briefly smile but shake your head. You have something important to do. What could be more important than watching another horror movie? Asked Kara. Answer honestly. You don't mind them knowing. You have to put a poster of your missing brother. Ralsei and Kara sit back. Both of their eyes widen. What? Ralsei quietly asks, his expression conveying disbelief. Concern. Your brother is missing. Yes. How long? Kara inquires, their voice is surprisingly gentle. Five years. Ralsei and Kara exchange unreadable looks. Ralsei pulls you close against his chest. He hugs you tightly and you can feel Kara rub up and down your back in a friendly manner. Oh really? Friendly? Okay. That sucks ass, says Kara. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. I'm so sorry, my friend. Stop friend zoning me, Fluffball! <gasps> my god! Freaking... Grab him! Kiss him! I don't care! Do something! Stop this friend! Freaking friend zone nonsense! My god! Says Rolsey. We'll help, says Kara. Come on, let's leave. What? Leave? 
Yeah, be better to do it before it gets dark. Oh, sorry, wrong person. Wow, bro. Steal my voice, why don't you? I'm sorry. Yeah, it'd be better to do it before it gets dark, says Ralt. See, between the three of us, we get it done in no time. We can stop by Malsai afterwards and get some more chocolate ice cream cone. You bite your lip. The chocolate of temptation is calling you. On one hand, they're right. It'd be better to do it before it gets dark. And if you have their help, it would go more quicker. On the other hand, Papyrus specifically asked you to be here. Ditching could be very, very bad. What'd you do? Take for... Ditch? What else? If I got a chance for more, for getting closer, freaking, freaking, damn it. Princey! I want your attention, my god. I want to leave. Kara and Raltzi scoot out of the booth to let you out. You head over to Ray and let him know that you're leaving. Okay, says Ray. See you later. You, Kara, and Raltzi then leave the restaurant. As you antis anticipated... Ugh. As you anticipated needing to start putting them up right after work, you brought a duffel bag filled with them in. I've seen these, Kara mumbles, when they see the poster. You've been pretty consistent with these. You try to be. Have you gotten any leads, asks Kara? Nothing now. Is there Waltz who trails off? Can we, I, I mean, we have some friends. We can ask around. Do you mind if we keep a few? Of course not. Any lead at this point would be good. So long as you don't end up getting yourself put in your body bag and thrown in the river, we'd greatly appreciate it. Or get your head in a box. Preferably don't get your freaking head stuck in a box. And don't ask the police, because I'll put your head in a box, and I don't want that. Mm-mm. Any ideas, um, might have caused this, asked Kara. Like, he was with a bad crowd. You think, look, if I knew something, I would have told you, but I know nothing. Your brother was a detective in Rue City, a very good one at that. He came to Delta on a case and disappeared while investigating, because, yes, my brother was that amazing. He is Houdini! Oh no, Rolsey whispers. Kara looks uneasy. He was a good cop then, not the type to... Take a bribe from the mafia and look away like the police here do? I know you're saying, Kara. Mm-hmm. Kara nods, their brow frows. No, he was not that type. For some reason, Ralty looks sick. I'm so sorry that he's missing. Why does he look sick? Why does he look sick? Does Ralty know something? I get a horrible feeling Ralty knows something. Yeah, Kara says hollowly, their gaze uncosted. Sorry. I feel like you two freaking know something you're not telling me. It only takes two hours between the three of you to put up the posters. It could have been worse. You're very grateful for the help. Kara and Ralsi ask you about Lawrence. It's been such a long time since you were able to do that, to talk about your brother in a positive manner. You tell them about his bad jokes. No wonder that he got taken. And his inability to cook. Another reason why he... But actually, no, wait, why didn't they pay me to get him back? They'd be like, hey, have him for free. He can't freaking cook. They laugh at how he managed to get a pot of water on fire. Yeah, well, that that sounds a lot like me. Wait, how is he to get a pot of water on fire? It's freaking water. You tell him about his time in the academy and how he was excited on his first day and he forgot to put on pants and almost walked out the door. If it weren't for your panic intervention, he would have likely walked to school in only boxes. And goodness knows what would have happened next. The imagination will probably run wild. Some of the stories run familiar with them. Kara tells you about a time that Ralsei wore his shirt backwards for an entire day. Tag sticking out the front. That would have freaking annoyed the hell out of me. The tag just like sticking out the front annoyingly. Ralsei tells you about a time Kara tried to make a hat out of chocolate. Which again, that in itself is ambitious. Round of applause for Kara. Such a creative and ambitious thing to try to do. But forgot to take into account how chocolate melts in the sun and, well, you can imagine the result. They ask you about some of the cases he did and they actually recognize a fair few of them. I read about that in the paper, says Kara. Wow, that was your brother who solved it? He sounds like an incredible detective, praises Raltzi. Yeah, so freaking incredible. That's probably why I can't free find him. Sounds like we could have used him back when Dr. Rose was active, says Kara. Bet he would have solved it. You giggle, a pride swelling inside you. Yes, you bet he could have. Unless he did. Unless what got him killed. 
What could have normally taken you about four to five hours was done in two, and you were in a good mood by the end of it. The three of you visited Malse, where you ordered a chocolate ice cream cone for yourself. Ralsei made sure to get two ice cream cones this time, and Kara got a miniature chocolate cake. You remarked that a sweet tooth must run in the family. It's because we're rebels, says Kara. Our parents don't let us eat sweets at home. This is our only opportunity. Oh. Our parents, Raltsy trails off. You recall your previous conversation with Raltsy about them. Kara uses their finger to swipe off some of the chocolate icing. They lick it off. Honestly, if you heard our, mo our mother talk about sugar, you think we were snorting dust instead. Ew, says Raltsy. I'm not wrong, Kara gives you a flat look. You know what she got me for my birthday cake this year? You shake your head. Wanna guess? Absolutely not. You guess. Kara shakes her head. A sugarless rainbow rainbow drop cake. Essentially flavorous goo with flour inside. My god, the freaking it's one of these little god it's freaking Tori the freaking flower killer. This freaking flower is ivory per I'm surprised my character hasn't had a nightmare in a while. I mean flowers, flowers, flowers. Their face pinches up as if they bit into a rotten lemon. It was revolting. Rossi stares off into the distance. Terrible. Simply terrible. Poor baby's traumatized. You give them a sympathetic pat on the back. Which is why, Car continues, we charge them moments like these, sneaky onion sweets. What could be better? Car pauses. They wink at you. And spending time with our friend, of course. I swear to freaking God, anybody more friend thing is going to get on my nerves. Your lips twitch. You can't fight smiling at them. Friend, huh? I should warn you, says Kara. They sing an armor around your shoulder. I'm very clingy as a friend. Oh, God. Ralsei snorts. You think you can adjust to that? I'm glad we reached an understanding, says Kara. You spent another hour with Kara and Ralsei. It was a good time, and Ralsei walks you home. When you arrive at your apartment, there are police there. Of course. Of course there are. It looks like there was a raid or something while you were at work. Ralsei gasps softly. What? What happened? Another raid, you tell him. You tightly rub your eyes. You don't want to have to deal with this. But what choice do you have? You're about to walk up to the do not cross tape, but Ralsei pulls you back. Um, let's avoid them. How? Ralsei smiles at you. Do you trust me? Yes. He opens his arms. You step into them. Okay. What's he planning? He easily picks you up and swings you. To carry you bridal style. Excuse you? He wraps your, you wrap your arms around the back of his neck. And uh, if I don't get a freaking kiss at the end of this, I swear to God, I'm going to flip tables. Suddenly, you are both very high off the ground. You suck at night, sharp breath as you look down. Rosie can fly? Oh, yeah, he can. He can fly in his gone mode. I completely forgot. He freaking flies, technically. He levitates. He, he, can, he can fly. <laughs> Levit- he, Ralsei can fly? Levitate, he cracks. I uh, can't go too far off the ground, but it's enough. Which window is yours? You point your apartment window with the yellow roses. You always leave the window open. It'll be too big for Ralsei to fit, though, but you can manage. Ralsei floats above everyone and helps you through the window. End of chapter 6. God dang it, I didn't get any freaking kisses or anything. Mm -hmm. It was cute, but I feel irritated. I didn't get cutesy scenes. Did I accidentally avoid cutesy scenes? What is this? I mean, this was freaking cute, but I got friend zoned. What is this? I was promised romance. I was friend zoned. Cute friend zoned, but how dare you? Is this just like a freaking friend zone one? I was promised love. Where's my love in this? Oh my God, I got freaking friend zoned. It was cute. I loved it. But at the same time, I have goddamn friend zone. What the poop? I better be getting further freaking freaking me. Okay. So my question again is does it matter whether or not I got the clue in at the the swan pond at the lake? Do I need that? Do I need to go back and fix the save so the other boys have got it too, or does it not really matter? That's all I would like to know, mainly, and 
I guess another thing I want to know is, will I get to kiss the fluff ball at some point? Because... Mm -hmm. Papaya's had a lot of cutesy scenes! And... and... Mm -hmm. Dang it! I was promised this was romance! This cutesy, he was flirting! He was flirting! My character's a freaking idiot and won't even... Mm -hmm. God damn it, character, you're gonna have to, like, freaking jump and burn this mother. Good luck making a, a freaking M, a main character for me to like. This one by here, in this particular route, I could have freaking slapped. Every opportunity was there to freaking go a step further. My character's like, nope, friend zone, friend zone, friend zone. It was a cute friend zone, but still I got friend zoned. What the fudging biscuits? Well then, I'll see you guys in the next if game. We'll be going back to if under swap and we'll be dealing with Flowey. And then of course we'll do the friendship part. So I definitely 100% am going to get friends in. So we'll see how much that irritates me. So I need to do the friendship route in Dust Tail, the friendship route in Underswap, and the friendship route in Mafia Fell. I don't know if I missed anybody. And we've already got one romance route left, that being Underswap Flowey. Okay. Four routes left. Unless Dot Panel suddenly releases something and then I'd be like, okay, never freaking mind what I said. I'm also going to throw in something else that is if associated, which is little skits that, um, little random request thing. Actually, no, maybe I should make that its own video. Hmm. I don't know. It depends how long this gets. If this doesn't get too long, then it'll be included. If it's not included, it'll be the next video. Which means it'll be up shortly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think of Roltsy's route. I thought it was really cute. Um, Dot Pels, can you confirm that there a, the other ending is kind of... You know, like the first time when I went for Sansa's ending, I got that other one where it wasn't as romantic. Is this the one? This is like the best one I can get. This is like not the neutral one. I'm going to assume the other one must have been a neutral ending. Like for a neutral romance route because I didn't get all the items for that one. This probably makes sense to Dark Pearls. It's not going to make sense to everybody else, is it? Because it doesn't make sense to my freaking brain. Either way, um... Yeah, I'm going to head off and do more recordings and I will see you guys later. Bye bye. And remember, we will be doing a special episode where we take a look at all the clues and my brain. That's all I'm going to say is my brain. Hello, my little stars, and welcome to today's video. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to be reacting to some little request crossovers that Artpel16 has posted up on their Tumblr. So this is the first one, the crossover request for funsies, which feature Underfell, Underswap, Dusttail, Mafia Fell, and the Slumber Tale from the If series. So <clears throat> as we all know, I am very well educated and know my history well, aka my experience is up there for everyone to see in my playlist. <laughs> okay, starting with Underfell MC, the not the most smartest being out of all the main character ones that we get to control, unfortunately. She's not up there at the tippy top. Hello, it is nice to meet you. Underswap MC, far more intelligent for sure. Uh, that to be said, you know, just, just uh, quite a bit more. Like this one a lot better than the other one. And um, of course this one is Akara. Likewise, it's so neat to meet someone else who went through the underground. How was your experience? Magical, everyone was so nice. I beg to differ. I do not think Alphys was so freaking nice when she tried to murder you on a goddamn bridge. So don't you go telling her freaking lies to the other one. That is absolute malarkey and you are fully aware of this. So shut up and stop lying. Oh really? Everyone? Don't believe this one? She's 100% lying through her teeth. And just swap. AKA the Kara when romancing Sans who does this adorable little thing where he's on a bench and then he offers you to sit next to him, he scoots away, and then scoots right back! And then holds your head, and it's just so freaking cute. <laughs> anyway. Especially Sans. 
That's only when you were around to him, of course. If not, then he just starts tossing freaking stuff at you. And of course, there's a maze. You know what? I consider the maze an attack. That was an assault on me. What? He's so kind. He didn't fight you? He did, but only when, you know, you're not romancing him. No, why? Well, other version of me, my one, even when romancing the little shit, will 100% beat my ass in Jackman Hall and try to kill me more than once. And I will always remember that. The buzzer, the freaking drink, the golf forsaken hall, everything is up on that playlist. We want to see Underfell. If the if Underfell, I highly recommend. Go check out that list. Start with that. See how rage I get. I get so freaking annoyed at him. And then gradually, I just don't expect any less from him anymore. <laughs> My sanity just goes down and down. Okay, so let's see. Underfell, we're not romancing Sun. The dumbest decision you could do. Because, my god, he is slightly insufferable when you're not romancing him. You're a stinky gremlin. You're buying my groceries next week. <laughs> what the fuck? Why? Judgment Hall. <laughs> you can't keep holding this over my head. No, no, no. She has every right to hold that over your head. Hold it right over your head for years to come, sir. Under Swap Sands didn't attack there, Frisk. I thought that one was a car and not a Frisk. Huh, what a pussy. <laughs> Question, would you say that to his face? <laughs> Very curious if you would. And how that would go. Actually, no, that's not a request. I don't want to know. But still, Frisk has every every right to be angry at you. You are you, so... Mm, <clears throat> We need to let it go, let it go, let it go, go to your happy place. Moving on. Underfell, if romancing sans, I'm not talking to you for the rest of the day. What? Why? What? Why? Anderson didn't attack their MC. Dot dot dot. He regrets his decision, but he still technically did it. He he electrocutes you with a freaking buzzer. He gives you a drink that puts you to freaking sleep, and you die pretty slowly. Um, there's like I could keep going on and on at all the various ways he freaking kills you. He stabs you with bones. He freaking impales you. He squishes you into the ceiling. <laughs> Moving on later. Underfell sand. All right, you little shit. We got an issue. Mm. What? I gotta kick your ass now. Huh? <laughs> Why are you gonna attack him? You ain't the judge of your world. Out here making the rest of us look bad for you simply doing our job. Oh, oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> uh-uh. Nah. -uh. No, Sans. Uh, you don't get to have a sassiness with, with Underswap. Nah. -uh. Nah, you take that up with Papyrus. Oh god, help me when I get- wait, I haven't even seen what Papyrus is like in Judgment Hall. Oh god, I'm scared. Maybe he won't be as bad. He's more merciful, right? Yeah, sure, it's fine. Oh, you're upset because you did something impulsive and violent? Likely to your MC? It is not my fault you were born too stupid to make good judgment calls! <laughs> Instantly made my favourite skeleton. <laughs> Twinkle, why are you laughing at that? <laughs> because it was a really good burn. Do you need anything for that burn? Mm. I'm gonna crack your skull open. Underswap Summers is us. You can try. True, because I'm like, oh, my dear, my dear Sans. Oh, my dear sweet Underfell, my dear Red. You don't have a freaking weapon. He knows how to throw that damn thing, and he is very good at throwing that damn thing. Oh god, we got one for the papyrus. Hello! Yo. Looks him up and down. You remind me of my brother. Are you lazy? <laughs> how dare you judge someone based on how they look? Oh, I prefer to think it as working smart instead of harder. Oh, brilliant comeback. Well, I admire your ability to be intelligent. I have heard that line too many times from Sans. It is an excuse to half ass task and laze around. At least you don't reek of mustard. Mustard? I've heard of honey mustard. 
is disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Because it's more... You see, I could see why underfell papyrus might not like that at all. Like, for one, honey is actually stickier. I'm pretty sure he would hate that a lot more than mustard. It is so sticky and sweet. <laughs> oh god, if romanced. Oh god, what's happening? Future Twinkle here, just to clarify that where it says Underfell Papyrus, where it goes yo, that is 100% confirmed to be Underswap Papyrus. It, this post has actually been updated, so now it's got the correct papyrus showing where it is. So it's saying that this is a conversation between Underfell Papyrus and Underswap Papyrus. And um, yeah, I recorded this before it was fixed, so I could re-record it or just leave it as it is. So I just chose to leave it with my first reaction. Wait, why is it Underfell Papyrus? <laughs> why does it say Underfell Papyrus? Is he like trying to get with himself? Hello! Wait, I think he's actually trying to get with Underswap. Because he says yo, and yo is what um, Andreswap Papyrus says. Hello! Yo. Takes hand to shake. Realizes his hand is sticky. Tries to keep a straight face, but is grossed out. In turn, Andreswap smiles like nothing is wrong. Your hand is exceptionally sticky. Yeah, we'll just with MC. What the hell was MC doing with freaking honey? Oh god. No, never mind. My brain went places I should not have. Too much information. Brain, shut up. Turn off. Turn off. Oh my god. Am I allowed to, like, put this one up? Yangs his hand out and looks utterly disgusted. I'm with him. See, he, like... Wait. Hold on, wrong voice. They keep trying to get me to stop eating honey from the drop, but it's a struggle. Normally I do honey things for them since I enjoy their comfort honey somewhat. Oh my god. Shut up and deceased! Stop! Clean yourself, you sack of lazy bones, or I will make you! Oh god, please don't make him. Uh-oh, looks like I'm under screw to honey. Gah! I'm with him. Yeah, I think that was supposed to be under swap. I think. But I'm pretty sure Dark Pearls will confirm that's supposed to be Underswap, but I think that's Underswap since it mentions honey. Oh my god, that was hilarious though. <laughs> if more gets posted, I'll add to it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. This was small, but definitely worth reacting to. Oh my goodness gracious.